Bible verses for spiritual mind treatment. Hi there. I've had a long and happy association with the New Thought Movement and with Unity in particular. So I say this, spiritual mind treatment can work wonders, especially in assisting you to stay well, happy, vibrant and alive. It's much easier to stay healthy and vibrant than to regain health and vitality when you've lost them through neglect or other means. If at the end of the day, it all be no more than mind over matter or no better than placebo, then we are still dealing with a formidable power. And I happen to think that there is a lot more involved than just mind over matter. Here are some verses from the Bible which encapsulate some important metaphysical and psychological principles for spiritual mind treatment. Ideas and techniques that you can use for good in your own life. The main verses I want to address are these six. One, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, verse 33. Two, you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established for you. Job 22, verse 28. Three, but the word is very near to you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. Deuteronomy 30, verse 14. Four, he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Psalm 107, verse 20. Five, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12, verse 32. Six, he calls those things which are not as though they were. Romans 4, verse 17. In the course of discussing those six verses, I will refer to other Bible verses as well, and also some quotes from some people whose ideas and teachings are relevant. Now, let's look at that, those six main Bible verses in turn. One, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The kingdom of God is within you, that is, within your own mind. Jesus used the words kingdom and life interchangeably. To him, they were one and the same. The kingdom is life, abundant life, and life renewed, regenerated, resurrected, and redeemed. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In other words, it is your divine birthright. You already have within you, within your mind, that is, everything you will ever need to be happy, healthy, vital, whole and alive. The future is your present thoughts grown up, wrote divine science minister and author Dr. Joseph Murphy. Thought power is always creative for better or for worse, according to the nature, emotion, impulse, and conviction behind the thought. And what is thinking and thinking righteous thoughts? Plato put it this way, thinking is the talking of the soul with itself. I like that. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Righteousness means essentially right thinking. Get your thoughts right and everything else will follow. The second verse, 
you shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. There is no power but of God, God being the all in all, or the action of mind, infinite intelligence upon itself. I am God and there is none else beside me. We read in Isaiah. Thus God is all there is, and thus all that we are. God thinks only one word himself, wrote the Catholic Archbishop Fulton Sheen. Everything that exists is the realization and concretion of an idea existing in the mind of God from all eternity, wrote Sheen. Every bird, every flower, every tree has been made according to an idea existing in the mind of God from all eternity. Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore expressed it this way, God is the silent voice that speaks into visibility all the life there is. The power to change your life for the better lies in your own mind and in the proper use of that mind and your thoughts. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, we read in Proverbs. For as you think in your heart, that is, your, your mind, so are you. Thought is the real causative force in life. Indeed, everything owes its existence to an original act of pure creative thought. Further, that to which we give our attention grows. To think is to create, wrote Ernest Holmes. Thought is the seed of action, says Ralph Waldo Emerson. The ancestor of every action is a thought. One theory is that thought creates a mold in the unconscious mind into which your thought or idea is poured and then accepted. Then certain forces are set in motion in accordance with your thought or idea. In the Dhammapada, that great collection of sayings of the historical Buddha, we read this. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. Then there's this gem, also from the Buddha. The mind is everything. What you think, you become. The Bible expresses it this way in the book of Galatians. As you sow, so shall you reap. Never forget that. Now, Although there will always be some things you cannot decree, there are many positive things you can decree for yourself and others. And if you're prepared to work, mentally and otherwise, for those things, then they may well be established for you. There are many Bible verses on this theme, including this one in the book of Joel. Let the weak say, I am strong. This verse encapsulates the nature and technique of affirmative prayer, the aim of which is always the same, to lift one's consciousness to the level of the answer, for the solution is already complete in God mind. The third verse, but the word is very near to you, in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. Your own word, spoken and deeply held thought, is creative. Matthew's Gospel says, what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, that is, the mind. A word is simply a spoken or articulated thought. Everything, and I mean every single thing, starts with a thought in the mind. According to the Bible, God spoke all things into existence. But first, these things began as thoughts in the eternal mind of God. The world is the outpicturing of human thought. 
wrote Emmett Fox. Your life is conditioned by your own thoughts, not by the thoughts of anyone else. You can only express in experience your own true sense of what you really are, wrote Dr. Fox. So let your word go forth, for it shall not return to you empty, as we read in Isaiah. That is the power of creation in the macrocosm. The rationale behind all spiritual mind treatment is this. That very same creative power is also available to each one of us in the microcosm. Why? Because the macrocosm and the microcosm are in truth one. But where, you may ask, do we go to find and access that power? In our own individual minds, of course, there is no place else. Many philosophers postulate that all individual minds are simply an incarnation or expression, an agent of the one absolute mind. This is what Jesus really meant when he said, I and my father are one. It is a reference to the indwelling presence known as our father, which art in heaven. Now, even if our individual minds are not part or agents of one great mind, the fact remains that thought is creative according to the nature, emotion, impulse, and conviction behind the thought. All actions, good or bad, start with a thought, wrote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, who also said, we draw to ourselves exactly what we are. So, give voice to your desire, hope, or goal, and then hold your desire, hope, or goal deeply in your mind, that is, your heart. Here's another relevantly applicable Bible verse from the book of Psalms. It is true unto me according to the word of God. The fourth verse. He sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Like Jesus, send forth your word. All power is given unto me. That means you in heaven and on earth. Your word, your thought, must, however, be backed up by both conviction and feeling. Your creative thought needs to be emotionalized. That is both felt and believed before it can be accepted by your mind and later come forth as the answer or solution to your prayer. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone, we read in Scripture. It shall be done unto you as you believe. As you believe, so is it done unto you. Also words from Scripture. In addition, there must be a state of expectancy in your mind. Whatever you ask in prayer, now that refers to your desire or wish, believe that you receive it and you will. Dr. Joseph Murphy put it this way. Whatever you think, feel and believe to be true, your subconscious mind will bring to pass, good or bad. One other important thing, your conscious and subconscious mind need to be in unison for anything positive to happen. That is the real inner meaning of the Bible verse in Matthew's gospel. If two of you agree upon anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. The reference to two of you refers to your conscious and subconscious mind. When they agree, the creative power, Father in heaven, within, is then able to bring your desire to pass. The fifth verse, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Your I is your inner center of awareness, your core self. Earth 
metaphysically interpreted, refers to your present, perhaps limited, state of consciousness and lack. It is the realm of all things worldly, physical and temporal. Heaven is the realm of perfect and spiritual ideas, perfect health and vitality, true joy, peace, serenity, abundance and so forth. It's a kingdom and a kingdom not of this world. These spiritual, that is, non-material ideas, a veritable table of plenty, are implanted in your DNA and are part and parcel of your phylogenetic heritage. For example, you could never be healthy unless there were the perfect idea or form of health built into you, into every cell, tissue and organ of your mind and body. It's as simple as that. This truth is common to all of the world's major religions and religious philosophies. For example, Swami Vivekananda, whose teachings have greatly impacted my own life, said, Vedanta not only insists that the ideal is practical, but that it has been so all the time. And this ideal, this reality, is our own nature. So in the words of Plato, Take charge of your thoughts. You can do what you will with them. Lift up your eye from the earth. That is, from everything that is holding you back in your life. Then, if you do what is necessary to bring it to pass, you will draw all men, that is, thoughts and aspirations, unto you. Here's another important Bible verse from John's Gospel. Yet a little while I am with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Stay with your condition, the mental state of lack or limitation, etc., for only a little while, then ascend in consciousness to the Father within. More particularly, the perfect spiritual image of what you seek to create. Concentrate upon and contemplate whatever it is you seek, perfect health, freedom from the bondage of addiction, or whatever. The sixth verse, he calls those things which are not as though they were. This Bible verse encapsulates the essence and technique of all spiritual mind treatment. You treat the spiritual man or woman. You see things as you would like them to be. For in truth, those things already exist in you as perfect ideas implanted in your DNA and your phylogenetic heritage. All you need to do metaphysically to achieve by inducing in yourself a greater capacity to recognize the present existence of what you see. Charles Capps makes this important point in his little book, God's Creative Power for Healing. He says, this is God's method of calling things that are not as though they were until they are. There are some who have misunderstood this principle and they call things that are as though they are not. In other words, they deny what exists. The power is in calling for healing and health by mixing faith with God's word. Now, whether treating yourself or others, the technique is the same. You don't deal with the material or physical man or woman. Rather, you say, that is, speak the word, that the spiritual person is perfect, healthy, and whole. You envision that state of affairs, seeing yourself as you would like to be. For in truth, what is sought and conceived is always available and presently existing in and through the perfect forms that were instantiated in you when you were in the womb and through the power of creative consciousness. To a very large extent, 
what you see is what you'll be. Here's another Bible verse from the book of Isaiah in chapter 40 that sets out this wonderful technique for spiritual mind treatment. Every valley, that is, any state of lack, limitation, so forth, shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill, that is, any obstacle, shall be made low, and the crooked, that is, any entanglement or disorder or other difficulty, shall be made straight, and the rough plains, that is, difficult, hard times, smooth. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough plains smooth. Again, it's calling things that are not as though they were until they are. I want to finish with something that Pope Pius XII wrote. Man's mind belongs to a category of being essentially different from matter and superior to it, however limitless the dimensions of matter may be. And so it is. God bless you all.